most amazing artists. Hopefully you watched the video on Machu Picchu and you learned all about the ancient Inca city in Peru. Now, in Machu Picchu, they have llamas and they graze on the plateaus while the tourists are walking around exploring the site. And sometimes those llamas photobomb the tourists' pictures. It's really fun. So you're going to see in the video pictures of those silly llamas and then we're going to make our own really fun, cute, photobombing llamas. Uh, so when you're working today, we're going to learn about value, the lights and darks of a color. You're going to learn about depth, how to make our picture look like those mountains go deep, deep back. We are going to learn about patterns for our scarf. We're going to use shapes to make our mountains and our llama. And we are also going to learn about space and how we overlap things like the mountains that go back behind our llama and our clouds as well. So I hope you have so much fun today. I can't wait to draw with you. Let's go draw. Okay friends, before we get started on drawing our llamas together, I want to tell you a little bit about llamas. They are native to Peru and are considered one of the oldest domesticated animals in the world. Llamas are related to camels and like a camel, they are used to carry things long distances. Llamas are found in many areas of Peru, including one of the most popular destinations, the ancient Inca city of Machu Picchu. A popular photo spot above the ancient city is frequented by the llamas and they commonly photobomb into tourists' photos. This lesson is inspired by these delightfully photogenic llamas. So let's get drawing. Okay friends, so we are going to have a piece of paper. You may need a second one if you're going to do option two. So option one is going to be to draw your llama and your background all on one page. Option two will be to draw your llama with me, pause your video, cut out your llama, and then watch the next very end part of the video where I show you how to make a different background to glue your llama to. So you have option one all on one page or option two where we do some cutting and gluing. Depends on what you want to do as an artist and what supplies you have at home. All right, so let's get drawing. First, we're going to start near the middle of our page and just a little bit up. And we're going to draw a triangle, upside down triangle nose. I made mine a little rounded. Okay, then right on either side, we're going to give our llama some eyes, circles for eyes. And then, and one is bigger than the other, and I'm not going to worry about that at all, because sometimes those things happen as artists. I'm going to give them eyelids, and llamas have great big long eyelashes, so I'm going to give my llama eyelashes, and then my llama's eye pupil, and we'll color that in later. Okay, so we're going to come down here to the bottom of our nose, and we're going to come down and make like a little almost like a W shape for the llama's lips. And then we're going to give the llama its mouth. How about some eyebrows? And then we're going to give the llama his jaw. So we're going to come here and we're going to do a U shape. There's my llama's jaw. And now we're going to do his ears. So right above each of these eyebrows, I'm going to make an upside down U shape. And llamas have great big long ears. Boop, boop. And some fluff inside. So just a bumpy line to connect those two ears. Inside each ear, that's where the pink part will go. Okay. Now, from this ear, you're going to just make a bumpy line all the way to the bottom of your page. Notice that it comes in a little bit, okay? Because it's like the llama stretching his head a little bit to get into your photo. Then on this side, come down, bumpy, 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 right about 
below his chin there. And then go off this way to the side. So he has a nice big body, okay? And we're going to make sure when we cut out our llamas, if we cut out our llama, that we leave this straight line because we're going to use that to line up with our background. If you're doing option two, cutting out your llama. So our llama's done. Now I'm looking at his jaw and I'm seeing that this is a little thick for me. So I'm going to just redraw that line carefully and then I'm going to erase my other line. There we go. That's a little better. Well, let's just make this a little curved a little better. Perfect. And I can erase that after I go over it with black marker. Now, before we go to black marker, we're going to build the mountains in the background. So what we want to do is we want to add in clouds as well because Machu Picchu is very high in the Andes. So there's lots of clouds and mist. So I'm going to make some clouds behind my llama. Now I'm doing option one, so I'm not going to cut my llama out, so I'm going to make sure my cloud is behind my llama by stopping at this line. Fluffy clouds. Let's see. Do one more cloud over here. And I'm going to make a horizon line behind our llama. So just like we did with the scarecrow, we are going to jump over our llama. So I'm going to make a curved line and stop, whoop, whoop, jump over, and finish that line on the other side. Now I've got a hill behind my llama. My llama is in the front. Okay, our nice big mountain, our Andes mountain. I'm going to make that mountain right, come right up behind my llama, and stop there, and it might continue down here on that side. And then I'm going to make a few more mountains, but remember, I want my mountains to be behind my clouds. So what I'm going to need to do is to stop at my cloud and jump over and go down to the ground. This might go this way. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to have a mountain that goes up this way and back down and jump over my cloud and another mountain here and one in between. Lots of mountains in the Andes jump over my cloud and I might have a mountain in here so make sure I'm jumping over clouds. One more right there. All right, awesome. Now I'm going to outline all of this in black marker and then I will come back and talk to you about coloring. All right friends, I'm finished coloring my llama. Now I forgot to add one detail. We need to add some bumpy lines for that fluffy fur that our llamas have. So there we go. Now that gives us a little texture and makes us feel like our llamas are fluffy. Okay, for coloring our um, mountains, what we need to do is we need to have two different values or lights and darks of a color for our mountains. So I'm going to choose a light green and a dark green crayon. I'm also going to need a white for my clouds. You could leave them if you don't want to color them in. That's okay. And I'm also going to pull out a blue crayon for my sky. Okay, now when we are coloring our mountains, this is the part that I wanted to explain to you. We want to give depth to our mountains. And we're going to do that by coloring right down the center, one side a lighter value, and the other side a darker value. And that will give us the feeling of depth on our mountains. So right down the middle, and on this side, I'm going to color lighter. And I'm going to do that on all of my mountains. So we're going to have to pretend on this one, right, because it's behind our llama. So I know this side will be lighter and that side will be darker. So don't get too confused. Just take your time and think it through. And if you make a mistake, not a big deal, right? 
not a big deal. Sometimes when we're working with art and we're working with materials, little things happen and we make mistakes and Mrs. Arsley tries as much as possible to just go with it. Okay, let's divide this one in half. Now this one, you don't see the whole mountain, so only half of that would be light. Just remember that you always want to make the same side the lighter color and the same side the darker color. So check your mountains. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and color that, but before I do, I want to tell you one other thing. I'm going to put some pink in my llama's ears. If I can find my pink marker. Okay. I'm going to put some pink inside my llama's ears. I'm going to leave my llama white and I'm going to color this part a darker green as well and the sky blue. So I'm going to do that now and speed up and then we will talk again in a moment. So there we are, we're all finished with our llama. Now if you have pencil marks that are showing that you don't like, you can just go right ahead and erase those now that everything is in black marker. We need to give our llama a scarf. So you have a choice. You can, and I'll show you in the very next part of the video, but you can make a scarf on a separate piece of paper and decorate it with some patterns and color it and you could glue it down to your llama Woohoo! or you can draw that on so if you're going to draw that on I'm just going to use a black marker I'm going to draw on my scarf might have been a good idea to draw my scarf on before I did my other parts but that's okay I'm just gonna make it work right that's what we do so this is going to right now it's green I think what I'll do is I'll add some color to it um, so I can maybe change that. And I'm going to add, I'll kind of make my patterns work for me. So you could draw on your scarf and then you could either, either use crayons or you could use markers to go ahead and color that. Now if you use markers like with the ears it gives you a different feeling because you're using different mediums. do want our scarf to be nice and bright and colorful. Let's see if I can color. I can color a little bit over that crayon. Okay, I think I'm going to add one more color to that scarf. It feels like it needs a little something. I'm going to add some yellow. I'll do some yellow dots, maybe. Yellow probably won't show too well in there. You know, I think I might actually try to use a little crayon on top there, too. Okay, friends. So, there you have your adorable photobombing llama. Now, if you are wanting to do option two, that part is coming up next. And I can't wait to see what you make. If you are choosing to cut your llama out and put your llama in the background, remember he's up in the mountains in the Andes. So I'm going to make a curved line for a hill. And then, interesting, there's lots of clouds. So we're going to make some clouds on our paper before we make our mountain. So our mountains will be behind our clouds. And we've been learning about how to make things appear behind other things. But we're going to do that again now. So I'm going to make one great big mountain here. And uh, you'll be able to see this a little bit better when we... Let's see if I turn off that lamp helps. Okay, is that a little better? Um, this is going to be a little bit easier to see once I outline this with a black marker. So now I'm going to make a mountain here. But remember, I want these clouds to be behind, in front of my mountain. So in order to do that, just like we did with the scarecrow, we're going to go right to our cloud and we're going to stop, 
whoop, whoop, jump over and come up and oops I just hit that edge and that's totally fine gonna come back down and around there's my first great big mountain then I want some other mountains in the background so I'm gonna start on this line and I'm gonna come up and down to my cloud and stop and jump over my cloud and now my cloud is in front of my mountain so I'm gonna make a few more of those and they get smaller in the distance so I may even put in one peak here in the distance between these two okay so now let's do that same thing on this other side a mountain here start here jump over my clouds good and then this one's gonna go all over behind my cloud and off the page one more here and one more there okay now I have my mountains now we're gonna outline this with black marker and I can speed that part up for you and then after we do that, I'm going to show you how we're going to color because we're going to color in an interesting way so that we end up with different values and tones and it gives our mountains depth. Okay, friends, you may have noticed that what I did is I went in with a pencil afterwards and I erased any pencil lines where the Sharpie didn't go. So now I'm going to choose two different colors, values of green for my mountains. So I'm going to choose a lighter green and I'm going to find a darker green. Perfect. And I might even find a white crayon to color those clouds. So let me do that first color in my clouds. I know you can't see it, but when you're all finished, it does make it a difference to have those clouds colored in. And you'll see when it's all finished. Okay, so now what we're going to do to give our mountains depth which is another wonderful art term, is we are going to draw a line right down the center of our mountains. And we're going to color one side the lighter color and one side the darker color. And we're going to do that for all of these mountains. This one, since it's only half a mountain, I'm going to leave. Same thing with this one. So now I'm going to choose this side is going to be my light side and this side is going to be my dark side. And I'm going to go ahead and color and I'm going to speed this up so you can watch and see what I did and I'll come back in a moment. <laughs> So we just learned how to make this beautiful background for our llama if you're choosing option number two to cut out your llama and glue it down when you cut out your llama it's going to have a little section at the end that's the bottom of the page and the corner of the page you want to leave that we're going to use that isn't he cute we're going to use that and we are going to line up the edge of our llama with the edge of our paper when we glue so that our llama looks like he's coming into the picture, into the frame, like a photobomb. Okay, and I also showed you 
a scarf. So what you would do is you would glue the scarf there with the little ends. And I did my little phrase. I'm going to actually just bend some of those pieces of paper so that you get the feeling of the fringe coming off the page. Okay, and whether you chose to leave, do your llama all on one piece of paper or whether you chose to cut them out, you could add the scarf as extra um, as well, where you cut out a piece of rectangle, decorate it, and glue it on. Or you can just draw it on. It depends on um, your choices as an artist. So there we have our most adorable llama, option two. All right, take care, friends.